Yes, I will be renewing it, and I'm just waiting on the reply back. I have signed it, uh, just haven't been, I have not gotten a reply back from uh, uh, from Washington yet. So, but yes, I have signed it uh, probably a few days ago, uh, and I'm just waiting on it. So it hasn't been approved yet, but I've already signed it. And, you know, we've talked to you at length about this before, but for those, for the public who have, have sort of forgotten, why is it important for you to re-sign that and have that here again in Knox County? Well, let's go back to public safety. Yeah, it, it has nothing to do against any individual. And, and again, the, the propaganda that's out about it, I hear so many things that it's just not true. And I know that what I say, some people, they, they think I'm lying about it. And I have no reason to. All you have to do is look at it. The 287G has nothing to do with the patrol officers that are out on the street. They don't know what it is. They have no idea what the 287G is. The only time the 287G comes into play is when an individual is arrested and taken to our detention facility and charged with a crime. And once they're looked into a little further, if they have something in their background that allows us to look a little further into their, their history, which we're uh, entitled to do under that program, then that's when it comes into play, nothing else. And, and I get really aggravated when I hear people out here talk, well, our patrol officers are out there just putting people in jail just for that. That's not it. Back when I was on patrol, back in the early 80s, we still had people here undocumented that if, if they did a crime and we had no way of knowing who they were, then they went to jail, then they may have sit in that jail for anywhere for a month two months to three months at a time before ICE would come from Atlanta to either look at them and say, you can let them go or you know, we're taking possession of them because there's warrants on them or whatever it may be. Now, we're, now they don't stay in our facility more than three days once that's determined. So we get those individuals, if, if, if they have warrants on them, they've committed to crime, just like anybody else within our community, then they're going to jail. But if and again, and I get very personal about this, it really bothers me. Don't commit a crime, you don't have to worry about us. We're not knocking on doors, we're not going out here looking for people, and I'm not gonna go out here to other sites looking for somebody that looks different because they think that I'm coming after them because they, they're here illegally. I, I have more things to do to protect this community than to go out here looking for people that I have no idea what they've done. They've done nothing wrong. So they don't have to run, they don't have to do anything when we come around. We're there for their safety, number one, and for their protection. I want them to understand if they have a problem, somebody has assaulted them, any, just like anybody else, they need to call us. Because those officers, when they answer that call, once they get there, they will not be asking them about their immigration status. That's not what they do. And I get really, really upset, and I think you can tell it when people start talking that way and that we just put people in jail just because of that. We don't do that. We don't have time to do that. And even if we had time, I wouldn't allow it. That simple. can help you at all. Nobody comes forward to, come, to want to come talk to me other than the people who are against the 287G. And it's not our Hispanic community people. It's our people because they don't understand it. They don't want to understand it because they just don't think it's right. Well, I, I, I beg to differ. I think it is right because it's a protection for this community. I want to make sure that, that the public knows there's nothing here that we need to hide. If you, if you ask for a request for open records and you, you go by the guidelines of it, you're going to get what you're asked for. I don't, I don't think that, that that's an issue right now. Uh, we just want to make sure there's some clarification on that, and we're, we're good to go. Uh, and people come in here on a daily basis asking for open records, and I, I don't know of any other complaints that we've gotten that they're not getting it, uh, other than we're not quick enough. You know, if, if somebody comes in requesting something uh, very specific and we can get to it, we can get to it pretty quick. If they're asking for something very vague, that's hard to do. Just going after something so that's what we just want to make sure that we get some clarification and that's all but we're not going to appeal his decision i want them to know that uh, if something is going on within this agency agency that is wrong then i'm going to certainly look into it and not going to tolerate it but i also want the officers of this agency to know that i have your back when you're doing right things but don't put me in a position to where I have to make, make a decision that if you've done something wrong, 
you know what that decision is going to be. Well, we're still continuing on with our officers taking their precautions. Uh, and when I say officers, those that are out there answering the calls, our patrolmen, what have you. Our corrections side, they're taking the same precautions uh, with dealing with inmates. We're very fortunate, again, as we sit here, uh, we have not had one positive test come back for COVID-19 on an inmate or an employee of the Knox County Sheriff's Office. Uh, and I and I give that credit to our employees because of what they are doing to make sure that our correction facility is sanitized four and five times a day whenever anybody's moving around. Uh, so they're working very diligently to make sure that that stays that way. And that's in all three of our facilities. So uh, very proud of them of what they're doing. And uh, the uh, the officers out here on the streets are, are making sure you know, they're, they're able to have spray for their vehicles and uh, they have been told, you know, if you want to wear a mask, then that's, that, you're, that is your choice at this time. And obviously, if they're dealing with somebody, I think they're going to take those precautions. And for you, you know, when you talk about kind of the procedures, <laughs> when did you start implementing these types of, you know, intensive cleaning and sanitation efforts, you know, in the midst of COVID-19? Uh, as soon as it started coming out, about, you probably look back into the first part of March, that's when we started implementing everything and we started trying to get our hands on what we could to do all of our sanitizing, if you will, and uh, the PPEs that we had to get our hands on and what have you to, to again, officer safety to make sure that when our officers out there answering the calls that they are protected. And I mean, I'm going to make sure absolutely make sure that our officers are protected when it comes to this and to make sure that they know uh, that we're, we're helping them. And I think it's important to, for the community to know that it's not only just a protection for them, but it's a protection for the citizens out here just as well. Because if, if we had had an officer that, that had tested positive and we didn't know it yet, then we were taking those precautions to protect the citizens when they were out here answering those calls. So I think it's important for them to know that. I know we'll get some of the numbers afterwards, but I, I think Kimberly said 58, 59 tests, 58 came back negative, still waiting on that last one. How important was testing in this? Were those tests voluntary? Were those folks showing any signs? Or is this just something you implemented to keep it, to make sure you knew what was going on? What, what our staff implemented when an inmate came in, that that inmate was screened immediately. And some of those early on, the tests were taken up to five days or, or however long it was because the tests were not coming back very quickly as they are today. When an individual came in, they were, uh, they were isolated for 14 days, depending on how long they, they were in our jail. Uh, they were not put into the population. So even if, even if they didn't have any symptoms, we made sure that we, we checked their temperature uh, all the things that we set up to make sure that happened. They never went into the general population until after that, that time passed, just to make sure. And if we had somebody come in and claim they've had it, which we've had, we've had a few come in saying they've had it, then we've been able to determine that they had not even been tested or either if they had been tested, they tested uh, negative. So no matter if they said they did or not, they still went through the process. So uh, the staff was very adamant about making sure that that's the way it stays and that's the way it is today. It hasn't changed and we, we won't vary from that at all. Uh, so with that being said, as you said, we've had 59 inmates that have tested and all 58 of those have come back negative and we're waiting on the last one to come back in. If we have an inmate come in today, they go through this the same process, so there, there's no varying from that. How long do you see that staying as protocol? Is it, can you even say at this point? I, I, I can't say because we just don't know how long it is going to last and how long the man, so-called mandates that are going to be there, uh, I say so-called mandates, not, not to uh, denigrate at all anything. What, I'm, what I mean by that is that we, we have no idea because things could be extended or things can either be pulled back a little bit. So that's what we keep an eye on. But uh, what we have said we're gonna do is continue doing it until we feel like that it's time that, to, that we can either come back. <clears throat> I had gone out to the uh, Roger D. Wilson facility a couple of months ago, uh, just when myself and the chief deputy were out uh, doing patrol ourselves and going and checking on our people. Uh, 
the em our employees were being tested as far as our their fevers or not their fever but their temperature I got checked our chief deputy got checked before we went past any doors in that facility so we're, we're making sure that uh, we are are taking the precautions as well to make sure that we protect those inmates that are in there when we talk about this database I know just a little bit before this this interview that's been sort of a topic of conversation in the city at least statewide actually can you talk about your stance on using those positive cases to protect your staff and employees and how you'll be using that information and who has access to it and that's the only time that it will be used is for officer safety <clears throat> I want to make sure I'm very clear about that I am going to protect the officers and the employees of this agency and this community number one that's it there, there's no discussion about that when people say that that information is going to be given out no it's not that information will only be used when an officer is answering a call that information will only be used when uh, as of right now whenever we do get approval on it which uh, we had sent it in just the other day uh, that was going to be used for our jail to make sure that when somebody comes into our facility that we know immediately we don't have to wait and make a phone call and maybe if somebody's busy we have to wait to find out something that's immediate for us to be able to find that out uh, we'll make a decision on on how it's processed within the patrol side later whenever that that comes about uh, i probably shouldn't say it but I, i'm going to say it i didn't learn about it for some reason it didn't come through my email i didn't see it or either i misplaced it whatever it may have been this came out last month so when i heard about it over the weekend i thought what's going on so I looked into it and I said we need to do this this is an officer safety issue uh, with, with nothing else to have to add to that and I want I want the public to understand too this is not information that's going to be given out to just anybody and it's not going to go anywhere from there I heard the governor say uh, yesterday that you know it may not last very long and that's dependent on how things are progressing within uh, the positive COVID test and what have you and people who are uh, have been tested uh, that's going to determine how long that lasts and when it does then we don't have it anymore but I want to make sure that the public understands that that information will not be disseminated to anyone outside anybody that gets that information has to sign a uh, disclosure notice and there it's well they can be charged if anything is given out so you know we're going to make sure that we protect that just like we would protect anything else so right now you're using it for those inmates so you can just look if, if an inmate is on that list has tested positive and kind of speed up that process absolutely absolutely and then down the road as far as allowing any officers or anyone who's making those calls in the field um you'll figure out how that looks from from your perspective or, or if that's important to the situation if they're going to be in close contact is that kind of the moving forward the, thought process that is but there's already a, a mou with 911 that they are able to give out a universal code to the officer at an address when when somebody calls in they give their address it shows up on 911 if there is a, a universal issue there or we we're told that they have weapons or something that information is disseminated to that officer so that officer can make plans on the way to that location that's what it's for that's it nothing else and, and i know that there will be some uh, critics out there said well no you're giving that information you're going to pass it along that's not it you know that all, all all i can say is that that's just nothing but a a propaganda issue for them to be able to to not like it uh, but again it's it's not but anything for officer safety and i want to make sure everybody understands that um and i think too uh i always want to compliment the men and women of this agency because i know they work hard the men and women that have been out here during this covid 19 uh, virus that's going on haven't haven't flinched uh, an eye or anything you know they they haven't questioned anything out here and they and, and it's those people within our our corrections facility too and that's not an easy job and i and i we've all been there any of us that have worked here understand what it's like to work within that jail and it's a very difficult job and keeping people in there is very difficult keeping people to work in there is very difficult uh, and uh, I commend those men and women that that dedicate their their time to that because I, I know it means a lot to this community but to have the safety 
uh, of that facilities, of those facilities, and, and our men and women out here on the street and in our schools, uh, I, I commend them on, on a daily basis. And, I'll, and for me, uh, it's an honor for me to sit here behind this desk.